Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to go back to day one on the Creative Island and learn the basics of the mechanics components. As you can see here I've laid them all out for you and I'm going to go through each one of them. Uh, the objective of this video is going to be talk about the components, uh, what they do and then how to configure them, uh, what inputs they take and also what inputs or outputs they give. At the end of the video, uh, you should have a basic understanding of each of the components and then also how to use them in your create, uh, creations and how to configure them. Let's go ahead and dive straight in. So first off we have for you is going to be the track bases and the tracks. First off we have for you is the linear track. This linear track is the larger version of the two. This receives a red input. This one itself receives two inputs, one for up, one for down. In this tutorial, I've gone ahead and connected a push button. So when I go ahead and press the one that's connected to the up, you'll see the track moves up. And then when I go ahead and push the button that is connected to down, it's going to move down the track base. You can obviously then go ahead and extend that as far as you want and have a track system. It's the same system as the crane on Ireland is connected to. Next off, we move on to the compact track. Once again, exactly the same as the larger version. However, this receives a number input instead of a on off signal. Pretty simple. If you give it a one, it's going to move up its track base. If you give it a minus one, it's going to move down its track base. Next off, we move on to connectors. First off, I'm going to start with the small connector. Small connector, pretty much quite simple. It says it in the name. It connects to another connector. This receives a on signal to connect. And then once again, if the on signal is on the other connector, it will then draw itself together and connect. We then have a hinge connector. Once again, exactly the same. If both connectors are on, it will draw itself together and connect. We then also have a magor connector. The magor itself, if you give it an on signal, it's gonna turn the magnet on and it's gonna again connect to any surface it touches, whether it be ground, wall, vehicle, so on and so forth. There is obviously a certain amount of pressure that it can take until it will break. However, in the name, it connects to anything, it mags to everything. Next off, we move on to the large connector. The large connectors are pretty much exactly the same as the small connectors. They connect to another actual connector. And by way of doing that, you toggle the magnets on and off. The only difference with the large connectors is they have different inputs and outputs. Now the connector itself can send a number value and send a on off signal. It can also receive a number value and receive an on off signal. This is very useful for creating multi-part creations, i.e. ships, where you can send a number of signals, for example, from your bridge down to the engine room in different vehicle or different entity, and then have that number work and actually control things. As you can see just on the left here, it also has a power input, so you can receive power and send power between different creations and so on and so forth. Next off we have for you is going to be our pivots. We have the small compact ones on the left and the normal size ones on the right. There are two different types. First off you have is going to be our robotic pivot and then on the right you also have is going to be our velocity pivots. The difference between the two, the one on the left, which is the, the robotic one, it has a range of turn 0.25 in either direction. So if you give it a number value of one, it's going to move to the direction, the positive direction, whichever way you place it and then negative value it's going to move in the other directions. It does not do a 360 and as you'll see here when I give it a value of 1 it moves to the right and a value of minus 1 and it's going to move to the left. With the velocity pivot itself the number that you input to it is going to be the determining factor of the speed so if you give it a low value of 0.1 you can see it's going to slowly rotate around. If you give it a full value of 1 which is the maximum it's going to rotate quite fast. Same goes if you give it a num number value of minus one it's going to rotate in the opposite direction and then if you give it a number value of zero you can stop it. Moving on to the larger ones or the normal ones exactly the same as the compact ones just on a bigger basis. If we go ahead and give it one on the robotic you can see it's moved fully to the right and at minus one it will go ahead and move full to the left. Same with velocity pivot, number value of one, it's gonna move. And a minus one, it's gonna go backwards. And a zero to stop it. Next off, we move on to our robotic hinge. 
once again, it has a range of motion 0.25 to the left and 0.25 to the right on our axis. We'll go ahead and give it a 1, it's going to move fully to the left, and a minus 1, it's going to move fully to the right. Next off, we move just to a hinge connector. These connectors have no inputs or outputs. They are solely on gravity itself and what you connect to the other end. So for example, I'm just going to go here and push it, and you can see here it's moved. Pretty simple, pretty easy, just a basic hinge as you would on a door in real life. Next off we have for you is going to be the piston. Piston itself has a minimal retracting block size of five blocks and it can extend to a maximum of nine blocks. So as you see here, if we give it a number value of minus one, it's gonna retract fully to five blocks and number value of one, it's gonna extract all the way through to nine blocks total. Next off and lastly, we're gonna move on to the door components. So first off we have for you is the custom door. As it says in the name, it's custom, so you can make it to any size you want. You can add as many hinges as you want to it, and you build it with the base or the exterior, the frame, and then you also build the interior so you can add windows and so on, handles and so on and so forth, and make it exactly how you want to make it. As you can see here, you do have to add the actual hinge itself, which is controlled through a number input. So we give it a one, it's going to move 0.25 turns in one direction, and give it a value of minus one, it's gonna go ahead and move 0.25 turns in the other direction. Next off, we move on to our docking doors. We have the normal size one, and then we have a small version of that. These are exactly the same as the large magnet that I've talked about. They have a magnet component to them, and so that's just a normal on-off switch. They also have the actual door itself, which is an on-off switch. These also send a number, send a signal, and receive a number and receive a signal. These, because they have magnet components in them, once again, if you have another one on the other end, both of them are turned on, they will draw to each other and it will connect and dock, as in the name says. Once again, on off signal to open the door. Going on to the small version, exactly the same, all the same components, on off signal, turn it on and off. And lastly, we move on to our hatch and our normal door. These were the first, one of the first components of these door components that were added to the game. Very basic, very simple, no frills on them. Just a simple on-off switch will open them. And there we go. Perfect. Well, there we go. We covered most of the mechanics that are mechanics components that are in the game as currently on 4.20. Uh, I have left a couple off that I won't be covering in this video, but I will be covering in future videos. Uh, as always, I hope you've liked this video uh, and found it somewhat informative and useful. Uh, it's very helpful, I find, for at least for people that are just starting off in the game um, and don't have a real understanding of the mechanics or the components and how to use them and what to do with them. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for any future content as there's quite a few different uh, videos I have lined up for the next couple of days. Uh, and always come over to the Discord community, uh, Stormworks community chat. Uh, myself is always in there and there's always a whole bunch of different other people in there that are always wanting to help and give advice to anyone that needs it. And that's about it. I hope you have a great day and look forward to seeing you in the next video.